Some think featherless chickens are interesting or even bizarre. To be honest, I think they're somewhat scary. However, this breed was actually created by Israeli scientists, though not to terrify people. For over 50 years, they've tried to breed featherless chickens by natural means without any genetic interventions. They simply bred naked neck chickens with traditional broiler chickens for several decades. As a result, they got this. For poultry farm owners, this breed has a lot of perks. Featherless chickens grow faster, require less food, are better adapted to a hot climate, though there are quite a few downsides which make the chicken's life hard. They don't tolerate low temperatures well, are more susceptible to parasites, mosquito bites, and sunburn, and don't get me started on mating. Sometimes the males of featherless chickens fail to achieve their goal because mating rituals involve flapping their wings. And when it comes down to business, the females are injured by the claws and beak of the male. Usually they're protected by feathers, but not in this case. I'm not sure if the pros outweigh the cons here. What's the point of such a breed anyway? They say it's more, well, environmentally friendly? I know it sounds weird. When it comes to factory farming, feathers are considered a completely worthless investment. Chickens need energy to grow them, farmers need money, electricity, and water to remove them, and the result is a lot of wasted effort. Of course, there's a question of the ethical side of creating such breeds, but it's always like that when it comes to breeding animals. However, animals lose their fur or feathers not only through humans' fault. Meet Nelson. Nelson is a hedgehog, but he's completely bald. Volunteers at Foxy Lodge Wildlife Rescue believe Nelson's baldness is caused by stress from some sort of trauma he got in the wild. All the hedgehog spines and hair fell out, and despite a whole year of daily massages with almond oil, never grew back. Other than that, the animal's completely healthy. Though he has to stay in the rescue center, it's simply impossible to survive without spines in the wild. I think chickens can also go bald after a lot of stress, but it's much more interesting when they lose tails. Not in one day, of course. This happens when the birds are missing a coccyx from which the tail feathers emerge. This mutation is congenital. It occurs from time to time in all kinds of birds, and it's also inheritable. Tailless birds are first mentioned in a book published in 1600, but most likely they existed even earlier. It's just that no one is documented. In the 20th century, people decided it'd be a great idea to create a whole breed of tailless chickens because, well, most likely just because they could. So far, there are several such breeds, and all of them are considered very rare. The gene responsible for the absence of a tail kills about 25% of chickens even before they hatch. So yeah, people did something weird again. The thing is, when nature does something weird, especially on a large scale, this doesn't raise any question, and it's called evolution. For example, nature took teeth away from birds. Yes, birds used to have teeth. And to see this, you just need to take a look at the dinosaurs. All birds have a gene that deactivates the formation of teeth. Researchers at the University of California, Riverside found this gene dates back to a common ancestor of all modern birds that lived about 100 million years ago. Until that moment, everything was fine. And then the teeth began to fall out and the beak began to form, almost simultaneously. Scientists used to assume that birds lost their teeth in order to become lighter and more successful in flying, but then it turned out that the loss of teeth didn't coincide with the evolution of flight. What's the point of this anyway? Look, bats have teeth and don't have any problems with flying. Today, the researchers simply say they don't know why the birds lost their teeth. There aren't any scientifically confirmed theories. 80 million years ago, modern birds without teeth appeared. Just like that. But there's a reason I said that birds have a gene that deactivates the formation of teeth. If you tweak this gene a bit, the teeth will grow back. Can you imagine a chicken with teeth? Scientists from the University of Manchester can because they actually created such birds. Well, they didn't let the chickens hatch. They probably decided this experiment was too cruel. But they managed to find out that birds' teeth are similar to the teeth of alligators and crocodiles. This is not surprising. After all, birds are the closest living relatives of reptiles. However, birds weren't the only creatures who lost teeth in the course of evolution. Turtles and frogs have also gone through changes. The common ancestor of frogs, which had lower jaw teeth for a long time, lost them over 230 million years ago before eventually going extinct. Probably not due to the lack of teeth, though who knows. Turtles lost their teeth later, about 160 million years ago. In any case, that's how they dated the toothed turtle fossil found in the Chinese province of Xianjiang. And if you think about it, turtles hardly suffer due to the lack of teeth. 
Evolution gave them beaks. And since turtles, like other reptiles, don't chew food but only tear out chunks and swallow, they don't really need teeth. Especially since these turtle beaks are super strong and their bite is damn painful. Beaks are also very adaptable tools that can change quite quickly over time. Well, quickly in terms of evolution, of course. But what really surprised me was the following fact. It's quite possible that ancient turtles had horns. In any case, there were several species of horned turtles that lived in the territory of Australasia. That is, in the region including Australia, New Guinea, New Zealand, and the adjacent islands in the Pacific Ocean. They could have appeared 15 million years ago and lived on some islands for a very long time until 3100 years ago they crossed paths with humans. Okay, this is only one theory why they went extinct, but the fact is that because of their horns, turtles simply couldn't hide their heads in their shells. This made the animals more vulnerable to being stabbed in the neck by spears or similar weapons. And yet scientists believe these horned turtles coexisted with humans for another 300 years until they were completely wiped out. To date, we know of only one horned turtle. It lives in a zoo, and its horns are just the result of some kind of mutation. But let's get back to the birds. Did you know the ancestors of penguins could fly? In fact, the distant ancestors of penguins first learned to fly, and then, around 60 million years ago, or even earlier, they decided this skill wasn't important. They developed larger muscles to swim better, denser bones that added strength and reduced buoyancy, and shorter, stiffer wings for more powerful swimming strokes. All this didn't go well with the ability to fly, and the penguins abandoned it. It's believed that the oldest ancestor of the penguins known today could no longer fly, although it still resembled an ordinary bird. Apparently, it arrived in Antarctica from New Zealand, then lost its long neck, its beak became shorter and its belly larger. In general, it became more penguin-like. A similar story happened with snakes. I mean, they didn't fly, but sometime around 100 or 150 million years ago, they had quite ordinary limbs, then the snakes lost them. And scientists have two theories as to why this happened. The first one points to a land origin. Snakes were lizards who started to burrow, and over time they became increasingly adapted to life underground. In the end, there was no need for limbs anymore, so they disappeared. First the forelimbs, then the hind limbs. The second theory considers the origin to be in water. Snakes evolved there, lost their limbs to make it easier to swim, and then crawled out onto land. But today, most researchers support the lizard theory. But the machinery for limb development still persists in snakes, even after millions of years. It simply switched off. Moreover, some snakes, for example pythons, still retain tiny vestiges of limbs in the form of two bumps on each side of their pelvis. Thanks to this, modern pythons may actually regrow their limbs, and they won't even have to go through a long evolutionary path. The right genetic mutation will be enough to start the development of limbs that in fact, already exist in the body. I hope you aren't tired of hearing about limbs yet, because I simply have to tell you about crocodiles. Approximately 120 million years ago, a 10-foot-long crocodile relative came to the territory of modern South Korea, but did it in a very unusual way. It walked on two legs. There are no known fossilized bones of this weird crocodile, but dozens of its footprints are preserved in the stone. Well, so what, one of our viewers might say. Dinosaurs also walked on two legs, but that doesn't surprise anyone. That's true. But dinosaurs walked on their tiptoes, just like their descendants, birds. And this crocodile left clear footprints, walking on the flat of its feet and leaving heel impressions. In general, it walked the same way humans do. And no, no prints of the front limbs were found, which means that the croc felt comfortable moving on two legs. Though a crocodile walking on its hind legs is not a very scary picture, unlike a shark with a circular saw in its mouth, 270 million years ago, there was a shark-like fish on our planet with a very unusual jaw. When scientists found its fossilized remains, they almost decided that it was some kind of shell, like that of Nautilus. But then it became clear it was part of some fish. Though scientists have no idea where this saw made of teeth could fit, how, in fact, it was attached to the fish, there are so many theories that scientists still can't decide which one is more credible. In any case, this shark died out without passing on its weird jaw to offspring. 
and perhaps this is for the best. We're actually lucky that modern sharks have such boring jaws, because once upon a time a shark with scissor jaws swam the oceans. I wouldn't want to encounter a creature like that. Woolly rhinos also didn't survive the evolutionary race. These were huge, furry creatures well adapted to low temperatures. They lived in peace for hundreds of thousands of years, until suddenly, 14,000 years ago, they went extinct. At first, scientists assumed that ancient people were to blame for that, but it seems the extinction was caused by climate change. The planet got too warm. There was an increase in precipitation, the grass was out of reach, and they decided to die out. Not much of a choice given the circumstances. By the way, the closest relative of the woolly giant is the Sumatran rhino. True, it's not a direct descendant, more like a great nephew. But perhaps one can say that, in a sense, the woolly rhino lost its fur and continued to live on the planet. Evolution is a very slow process anyway. Any of the changes I've already mentioned today take an incredibly long time to happen, especially when it comes to gaining size. For example, mammals took 24 million generations to go from mouse size to elephant size. For comparison, the mammals shrink up to 30 times faster. Sometimes, evidence for the theory of evolution can be found in the most unlikely places. Take salamanders and lizards. Salamanders are amphibians known for their amazing regeneration. You can cut off a salamander's tail and in a few weeks, it'll grow a near-identical one. Lizards are reptiles that descended directly from amphibians. Yes, lizards also know how to regrow their tails, but this will be more like an emergency replacement. The new tail will be a different color, with different scales and tissues, that's more like a cartilaginous prosthesis without bones. But when scientists transplanted salamander stem cells into a lizard, its tail recovered just as well as if the lizard were a salamander. Though actually, lizards that regrow their tails can sometimes, let's say, overdo it. They can grow two, three, or five new tails. And this is not some current issue you can blame on bad ecology. The first reports of multi-tailed lizards appeared hundreds of years ago. So far, scientists haven't figured out how having several tails affects the life of lizards. Maybe they run slower. Maybe they can't communicate with other lizards and leave offspring. Or maybe having many tails is considered cool among lizards and everyone wants to be like that. Who knows? See you later.